Hey friends, welcome to our Wednesday noon hour divine conversation from eavesdropping to engaging. My name is Michelle Christie and I'm the director of adult discipleship at Trinity Church. And it's a great opportunity for us to be able to spend some time together. So I'm so glad you've joined me. And I'm going to share a few logistics with you before we actually get into some of the stuff I'd like to share with you today. Um, and that is that this is actually pre-recorded and we are playing it live during this noon hour time. Um, we debated about what to do, but felt this like might be the best way to do that. So I'm able to interact in the comments with you during this time. So we're gonna give this a try. Uh, this is new stuff for Trinity. This is new stuff for me. And so I'm just gonna ask that you would be patient with us and, uh, interact with us as we give things a try and uh, we'll try this for now. Maybe it'll be something different the next week, but this is the plan right now is to try and pre-record this, play it live so we can interact and then go from there. Uh, so we'll be meeting together right here Wednesdays at 12, 15 PM starting today. And then this will run through May 13th. So Wednesdays in the noon hour, there will also be an opportunity for you to engage with some stuff uh, that I'll be sharing with you during these times. And then if you would like to personally engage it during the week, there will be opportunity then to get on a Zoom call. I'll be hosting a Zoom call from 7.30 to 8.30 on Wednesday evenings where we can share together around the stuff that I'll be sharing with you. So I would love it if we could build some community during this time uh, in a way that we can during this COVID season. And so I'll be on Zoom and I hope that you will, yeah, decide that you would like to join in some of that. And we'll be spending time during that Zoom call uh, around scripture, what you've heard the week before. So I'm gonna invite you to engage with some scripture and then we can um, process it together, maybe pray for one another, do some check-ins, uh, just kind of see, see what it looks like, but inviting you to a, a safe space to share how you're hearing from the Lord and what he's speaking into your heart and life in this particular season. So definitely some opportunity to engage with him and hear from him. So this is something that's been on my heart um, for some time, and kind of felt like as we were looking for ways to engage with uh, you all, that this might be the time to try it. So yeah, so here we are. And I think that the impetus or the urgency of it maybe would be a better word, comes from an article that I read last week that really struck me. It was an article talking with some church planters and pastors from Italy and Spain. And they talked about the need for um, and wondering even for themselves, had they helped their people to be able to access the scriptures during crisis and to know and develop an intimacy with Christ and feed themselves through the scriptures and feed their own intimacy with Christ. Boy, that hit me like a ton of bricks. And um, even made me cry a little bit. Now, if some of you know me, you know that uh, I cry pretty easy. But I just thought, wow, this was running around in my head. Um, I read this article, and I kind of felt like now is the time. And so I'm going to share with you some personal experience today. I'm going to share with you some scriptures where I believe that, that Christ is inviting us into this space um, that I believe he has something to say to us through his word. And so how can we more fully develop um, our hearing and our listening and uh, seeking him through the scriptures? So that's what this time is primarily going to be about. I'm going to share with you some tools and um, some ways and invite you into some practices that could help facilitate that during this time. I'll be sharing some uh, specific scriptures with you and inviting you, like I said, in the Zoom calls to engage during the week with some scriptures that may be applicable to this COVID season that we're going through, right? Uh, a time of um, separation and distancing, but we know that God is always there. And so maybe what does his word have to say to us in these times 
that feels so abnormal, or I keep hearing people use the the term strange times, right? We see things that haven't happened since World War II happening, and we're not having the regular rhythms, no school. I mean, you you know what all this is about. You've been experiencing it for several weeks now. But what what does God want to speak into that? So that's what this time is going to be about. And so hopefully you will find it helpful. Um, and I'm just glad and delighted that you're here to share with me. Now, I've been thinking of ways that I could do this that wouldn't be too distracting. So I do have my scripture here, and I'm going to take a couple times in our time together to read from that. So I'll be looking down. Um, I do have some notes right over here to my right um, that I probably should reference. Uh, so, I, so I make sure that I'm giving you the right info, but hopefully that won't be too distracting. And uh, so we'll, we'll see how this goes, right? Asking for grace and for patience. Um, so I kind of feel like, yeah, maybe we should start with a quick word of prayer and ask God to join us as we embark on this adventure. Lord God, uh, thank you that you are a God who does not slumber or sleep. Lord, that you are a God who is on the throne, you are sovereign, that you are not unaware of our current situation right now in our current season in life. Lord, but I, I also know that you are continuously inviting us into this divine conversation that's happening um, between you and your people all the time that happened with your people in the word and the written scripture that you have left for us. So Lord, I pray that you would just join us in these times that we meet, join us today, Lord, open our ears and our hearts to what it is that you would like to speak to us. Lord, I pray that you would use my words to be an encouragement to others. Lord, and uh, so, yeah, by your spirit, come and meet with us as we share together today. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. So you might be wondering, what in the world uh, does this mean, divine conversation from eavesdropping to engaging? And this was something that came to me probably, I don't know, 20 years ago or so, as I reflected on my own experience in studying scripture and experiencing how God showed up for me. And so this idea of, yeah, that there's this divine conversation going on right from the very beginning when God spoke uh, in Genesis and it says, you know, he spoke and there was, that the power of his word is so powerful. And so from the beginning of time, God's been speaking, and we know that he spoke through um, prophets of old, um, spokespeople that he raised up, uh, kings of Israel and Judah and God's people. Uh, we know from the New Testament that John tells us that Jesus Christ came as the word of God, that he was the culmination in the final in some ways, speaking or the, the full embodiment of what God had been speaking all these years, that as Christ came and lived on earth, he modeled and showed for us, God demonstrated for us the word of God. And then we know that we have these scriptures that have been preserved and put together for us, God's way of continuing to speak to us through his word all these years, hundreds of years, centuries that he's, he's put this into our hands as a way to communicate with us. And so there's this divine conversation going on. And as I, I began to think about it all those years ago, I thought, you know what, I've, there's a lot of eavesdropping that happens right in here. I think I was in, um, I think it was Luke 1 in particular, uh, thinking of Theophilus and writing, um, Luke was writing to his friend Theophilus, the beloved of God. And he said, I'm, I'm writing this so you could be certain and know what, what, what God is doing. And then he began to give this whole account in the book of Luke. But as I read that beginning, I thought, wow, like there's an open letter. I get to eavesdrop on what Luke was writing and saying to Theophilus. And I think that's true for this entire book that we get to, to look at letters. We get to look at writings. We get to, to hear from the prophets. Uh, we have books of history. Uh, we have all the, this conversation going on, this written word. 
and we get to open it up and eavesdrop, right? Usually when you're eavesdropping, it's not something you're supposed to be doing. But I think God is saying, you've got the go ahead, eavesdrop on this, right? So we get the privilege of listening to all these conversations. I think of eavesdropping in another way as well, right? We get to hear things like I'm, I'm sharing today, some biblical teaching through Bible studies and sermons, uh, radio programs, stuff you might watch on YouTube, uh, any manner of ways. We also get to eavesdrop on other people's God conversations, right? And there's a place for that. That's good. There's, God calls some to be teachers and preachers and pastors and gives them things um, to share with, with his people. And so those are important parts of listening as well, eavesdropping on these divine conversations, things that people share from their own experiences, right? Uh, the writer of Hebrews says, uh, invites us that don't forsake the, the meeting together of yourselves, that um, this is good, that you might encourage one another and stir up love and good works. I think that's what eavesdropping on divine conversation is when it has to do with others sharing about their own God conversations. But I wonder, right, if that's all that we're getting, if that's the only input we're getting is eavesdropping on this divine conversation. I wonder if God's heart is grieved. I wonder what we miss out on, what it is that God wants to say to us. And I wonder if he's inviting us to something deeper and fuller, right? From moving from eavesdropping to actually engaging in a conversation of our own with God around his word. So from eavesdropping to engaging, that hopefully these things that we eavesdrop in, in on uh, can, can lead to engaging, us engaging God in his word by reading it, by listening, by journaling, by praying through scripture, and hearing from the Lord what it is that he has to speak directly into our hearts. Right, we know that God has given us the Holy Spirit, and I'd like to talk about that a little more in in one of the next week's times that we spend together. But that He's put our Spirit in us, and it says that the Spirit will lead us into all truth, will remind us of what Jesus and what the Lord has taught us in His Scripture. And so I think that the Holy Spirit gives us ears and eyes and hearts and minds to hear from the Lord, to engage in our own conversation, that we don't have to rely on everybody else. Right, that was part of this article too. That, like, if if Facebook and YouTube and Zoom and all these things went down, and we didn't have the capacity to listen or eavesdrop on other people's God conversations, where would that leave us? I think that's what the author of the article was saying and quoting the pastor saying, "If all this goes down, are people able to hear from the Lord? And what does the Lord want to say to them?" Right? And so sometimes I think that's a scary place for us. Well, how do I know the Lord's voice? Or um, maybe it sounds a little weird, like God is speaking to me. Right? And it's, and it's, it's not that a loud, booming voice comes from the clouds, right? As God did um, so many different times um, in the stories that we get to eavesdrop on here. But I think it is the Holy Spirit at work opening us up to hear what God wants to say to us. So that's my invitation for you all, is to engage in the divine conversation, eavesdrop on it, hear it, listen to it, but then move from that to engaging with God around his word and what it is that he has to say to you personally in this moment, at this time, in the situations in your life, in the seasons in your life, in the struggles and the trials of your life, in this season of COVID, what does he have to say to us? And I heard it phrased like this one time. I think it was William Barclay in a commentary saying that, um, that people, we want to move from a secondhand story to a firsthand discovery. Right, that often when we're eavesdropping, it's secondhand information, and we all know how eavesdropping can go down, right? But that's a secondhand story. But how can we move to a firsthand discovery? So that's the trajectory of what I'd like to do together in our time is think about ways that we can engage with God, talk about his scripture, and some of the ways and what 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 scripture has to say to us about God's word and the power it has and the invitation it has for us. So that's 
that's divine conversation from eavesdropping to engaging. And I think one of the things I wanted to share with you uh, is, is my own experience with this. About 25 years ago, I had moved from one town to the next. Uh, my husband and I had, I we were married and had just had our first child, but God was transitioning us into a new season. And so we had moved and so left our support structure, everything we'd known from the town that we had been in, um, had our first child. I transitioned from working full-time to part-time and then eventually to just staying home at that season. Uh, with our child at that time. We only had one child. But it was also a season of transition for my husband. And the one who had been my rock was now experiencing some things that um, I had never ex seen him experience before. And so I felt like the foundation of my life was shaking a bit, that I was unstable in unstable ground in a season of wondering, and maybe not unlike the season we're experiencing right now, this, this is a lot of change. There's a lot of grief. There's a lot of loss. Those were things that I was experiencing at that time. And so I decided to sign up for a Bible study and started working through that. And I was reading all these conversations, divine conversations happening with Moses and Abraham and David and, and Paul in the New Testament. And I I began to wonder and ask God, can you teach me how to hear your voice? Like you taught so many of these other heroes of faith? Like, is that for me too, God? Because if you don't show up, I'm not so sure I'm going to make it. And so I prayed that prayer eavesdropping on conversations that I was reading, but then began to engage God around that and say, Lord, teach me to know your voice through the word. And day after day, when my son napped, I would sit around my dining room table and God began to teach me through practice and through listening and engaging in his word, how to discern his voice and how he wanted to speak to me and what he wanted to speak to me. And that was an amazing time of growth for me. And it was a shift. It was a shift from um, listening and hearing to some of these secondhand stories, but to actually then moving into a place of firsthand discovery of what it is that God wanted to speak into me for encouragement, for hope, for direction in so many things and in so many ways. And so he began to teach me how to hear his voice. And so I'm going to share a few scriptures with you today where I, I feel like there's an invitation to do that. Um, and so I'm going to take a moment and look at my notes to make sure I'm, I'm not misinforming you. Okay, so hang on. Yeah, so I think one of the first ones I wanted to talk to you about was an invitation from Christ in Matthew 11, and it's verses 28 through 30. And it goes something like this. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. Learn from me. I will give you rest for your souls. Right? We might be a little weary and heavy laden right now with burden, right? But not only in this season of COVID, but in life, right? Life can be hard and it can feel heavy burdened. But Christ's invitation, is says, he says, learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly. This is an invitation, I believe. Christ is inviting us to, to hear from him, to, to learn from him. And it's with a posture of humility and gentleness. Like the one that he created, right? In Psalm 139, it says that he knits us together and he sees our form even yet as, as we were being formed in our mother's womb and that the days of our lives were fashioned for us before there were any of them. This God who knows us so intimately, I think through Jesus is inviting us to learn from him and to hear what he has to say to us. He's a gentle teacher. He's a meek teacher in humility, inviting us into this place of intimacy where we might learn to, 
to feed ourselves on the scripture and we might learn to develop this intimacy with Christ. So I pray today that you hear the invitation from him um, to come to me, to learn from me for I'm gentle and lowly in heart. The other one I often, often think about, so I'm gonna read it from the scripture, but is, is um, John 10. Right, and this is the chapter where Jesus is teaching about the Good Shepherd and who the Good Shepherd is, and Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd. And then I want to hear, have you hear a couple phrases or verses from this, what he says about the Good Shepherd and who he is. He says this in chapter 10, verses 3 and 4, and then verse 27. Jesus says this, but he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. In verse 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I don't know how that hits you, but I first read these verses in that season that I was referencing earlier. And I was like, whoa, like I consider Jesus to be my shepherd, the good shepherd. But then he tells me here that, that I can know his voice and that the sheep who follow him can hear his voice. They learn it. And there's a whole other thing I could go into about sheep learning the shepherd's voice. But if you study that at all, you will know that the sheep know the specific intonation and sounds of their shepherd. So when they're out on the hills grazing in the pastures, when the sheep calls, sorry, when the shepherd calls, the sheep come because they know it's his voice. And that he leads them and they follow. So to me, this is just another invitation by Christ saying, I am the good shepherd. I want to teach you how to know my voice. I want you to be able to listen for my voice and know what that sounds like in the scripture and hear through the word what I have to share with you, what promises I have to give to you, what direction I want to give to you. So I think this is the second invitation by Christ. And another one I was thinking of um, as I was preparing for this was Mark 4. Here are these words. It's Mark 4, 23 through 25. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. And he said to them, pay attention to what you hear. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And still more will be added to you. For to the one who has, more will be given. I love it. I think this is a promise that Jesus is saying, like, hear the words that I have to speak. And when you practice hearing, right, when it says, he says, pay attention, and as you practice it in, in, in the intensity and the amount of time that you spend practicing, more will be given, right? This is a spiritual practice invitation, I think, right? We call them spiritual disciplines, but we also call them spiritual practices because it takes practice. This isn't something that happens overnight, but I think the invitation from Christ here is, is asking us to hear it. Stop and listen and hear it. And then when you begin hearing and you learn to start hearing, as we hear, more is given. I love that. With the measure that you measure, it will be measured to you, right? So the, the measure of time and listening that I do with him, he measures more back to me. So this is a practice, right? And if you decide you want to start engaging in this during this time or further engage it, get on the Zoom call, right? Some of you may have been doing this for years. Others of you, this may be new. This may sound really weird to you. Um, but, but I just want to encourage you that, right? God takes what little we give to him and he can multiply that. Whatever time we give to him, he is so willing and ready right? It says in the scripture that if you seek me, you will find with find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you. 
I think he's just waiting to reveal himself to us, to, to speak into our life and give us the encouragement and the, the hope that we're longing for and looking for. He, he's waiting there for us, right? Come to me. Learn from me. Hear me. I'm the good shepherd. Like, I, I want to speak into your heart and life. I have something I want to say to you. I have a gift I want to give to you. Will you come? Will you come and spend time with me listening and hearing? Okay, I'm going to take another quick look at my notes. Okay, so I think the, the next thing I, I did want to talk about was a scripture from Habakkuk, which is one of the prophets in the Old Testament. And sometimes reading the prophets can be, I don't know, I, I guess difficult, right? So trying to get the context and the, and the history of Israel and what was being said. So I, we don't have a lot of time to go into that. And that's why I wanted to start with uh, the words of Christ and his invitation to us. But this is striking to me. And, and God used Habakkuk to speak to me a, a number of years ago and just really, I think, reinforce what, uh, what I've been talking about already. So there's a couple verses from Habakkuk I want to share with you, right? This was a, a time in Israel's history. Habakkuk was um, seeing and reading the, the culture and the time, and uh, Israel was, was far from God. And God had been warning the people of this captivity, of uh, invasion, that they were going to be taken captive. So the prophets were speaking into Israel's life, uh, trying to get them to, to pay attention and to hear. But often God's people were not listening. And so uh, Habakkuk was wrestling with God, and God was telling him this stuff that was going to happen, and Habakkuk didn't understand it, and it wasn't consistent with who he knew God to be. So here are a, a couple verses from Habakkuk. One of those is chapter 1, verse 5, where God answers Habakkuk, and he says this, Look among the nations and see, wonder, and be astounded, for I'm doing a work in your day that you would not believe even if it were told you. God was inviting Habakkuk to take a look and to see and to hear and look for the work that God was doing. And then over in chapter 2, this is some of my very favorite in Habakkuk. So God says this, and there's a little more dialogue, and Habakkuk's asking God yet another question and wondering, like, if you're the everlasting and eternal God, how is it that this is happening? Why is this happening? And so God speaks again, but then um, in chapter two, this is what Habakkuk says. He said, I will take my stand at the watch post and station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will say to me and what I will answer concerning my complaint. Did you catch that? Habakkuk says, I'm gonna stand right here. I'm gonna station myself and I'm gonna tune my ears to hear and I'm gonna look so my eyes can see what it is that God wants to say to me. That's profound. And I think that's the invitation that Christ is giving to us the, this idea of moving from eavesdropping, even on Habakkuk's conversation with God, to engaging with God. How is it that we might take our station to listen for what God has to say, to look among the nations, look around our families, our homes, of the circumstances around us, and, and what is it that God wants to speak into that? Habakkuk was being intentional. He was being purposeful in the way in which that he was seeking the Lord. I don't know about you, but yeah, I want to be a Habakkuk. I want to look for what it is that God has to say to me, not only in this season of COVID, but every day, every week, while I have breath and while I have life, I'm desperate. I don't know. Yeah, like I'm desperate to hear what God has to say to me. I need to hear his word. I need to have a reframing of my mind. I need to have a renewal of my mind. I need to have hope deposited in my heart. I need to have endurance and perseverance for the things that God calls me to. And for me, the only way I found in my life is by engaging God in his word 
and not only reading it and hearing the stories or the words, but then taking that a step further and engaging with God Maybe it's journaling or maybe it's through prayer, whatever way, but engaging with my God around what I'm hearing in the word and sitting and listening to him. And so as we go in these weeks, I'm going to be offering some um, spiritual practices to you. Um, And yeah, like I said before, inviting you to, to do some of this, to read maybe some specific scriptures, and then hopefully we can have a time to discuss that on Wednesday nights through a Zoom call. So we'll be posting all the information for you. Hopefully in the comments, I'll uh, yeah, be having some links in there for the Zoom call. Um, there, there's a landing page on trinityoc.com under assignments, excuse me, signups. <laughs> and the assignments will be there. Uh, I am hopefully putting together a PDF that you'll be able to access if you want to download some information from this, some scripture passages, maybe some space to engage some of this stuff, but we'll try and communicate well. So you can go back and look in the comments um, for any of the additional information around this. But friends, I, I just really want to invite you to this. I would love to journey this, this road together with you in this particular season and offer to you and invite you into using and engaging with some, some tools, right? this divine conversation from eavesdropping to engaging. So I'm going to invite you to come back next week. I'm going to invite you to the Zoom call and let's see what God wants to do in us individually, what he might want to do through us as a community of believers and followers of Christ. And so I wanted to end today with um, some scripture from 1 Samuel 30. It's David. And you see, David was appointed and anointed king in Israel, but he waited for 15 to 22 years until he actually assumed the throne. Uh, King Saul was after him because God's spirit had departed from him, and he knew that David was the succeeding king. But there was a lot of conflict. David was being pursued. He spent a lot of time hiding out. Um, right in First and Second Samuel, you can read all about this story. But I think this particular verse in First Samuel 30, verse 6, just really struck me when I read it. And, and David had been um, going out and doing some fighting with some of his men and came back to camp and found that the wives and the children had been taken captive. David was devastated as were the rest of the men in his company. And they were so angry that they wanted to stone David. And in verse 6, it says that the people wanted to stone him, but David, it says this of David. So David strengthened himself in the Lord. David encouraged himself in the Lord. And I wondered if that isn't what this engaging in divine conversation can be for us. Right, a way for us to strengthen ourselves in the Lord, to encourage ourselves in the Lord. When I go back to to that first um, quote that I shared with you about uh, feeding our intimacy with Christ and feeding ourselves in the scripture, I think that's what David did. He encouraged himself in the Lord. He sought the Lord. He went to the Lord, prayed with the Lord. And actually, he penned Psalm 27, which is such a beautiful psalm. And I hope that we'll have an opportunity to actually engage that psalm in our six weeks together. But David, out of his time of strengthening and encouraging himself in the Lord, wrote Psalm 27. Right in the end of Psalm 27 says, let your heart take courage. So friends, I'm inviting you to let your heart take courage inviting you to encourage and strengthen yourself in the Lord through engaging with the Lord in his scripture. So I mentioned several scriptures, right? We were kind of all over the place today, Uh, but I'm going to invite you to engage with some of those scriptures this week. Psalm 27, John 10, Mark 4, uh, I think it's 20 through 25, Um, Habakkuk 2, 1 through 3, If you'd like any of those scriptures, uh, yeah, 
Start reading them, listening for what God might have to say to you in them. And we're actually going to meet tonight for our first Zoom call meeting at 730. And I can give you some instruction or we'll talk a little bit more about what we want to accomplish or how we want to share our time on Wednesday nights in the Zoom call. So if you're up for it, uh, if you want to join tonight at 730, I'd be delighted, delighted to have you there and see you there. Um, so I think, yeah, I think that's it. This is first try, first attempt. We'll see what happens. But again, just glad you're here. Thanks so much for the opportunity to share with you. Thanks for your patience. Uh, be blessed, friends. Seek the Lord because he wants to reveal himself to you. Pray that this week, yeah, that you would have a firsthand discovery of what the Lord wants to share with you. Be blessed, friends, and I'll look forward to seeing you again.